Andreas Out has landed the machine and shut off the rotors. But what kind of bird is that? This is the conversion of a Sierkowski CH-53G transport helicopter into a stealth helicopter with Flettner rotor system. In fact, an ideal transport helicopter for German armed forces with bulletproof cockpit. In this incredible transformation, all external dimensions of the CH-53G, as the length of the fuselage, width and height, have been taken to scale in the model of the Flettner NH-222. During construction, many advantages of the Flettner system appeared, such as an enlarged loading space by approximately 35%, and by eliminating the tail rotor about 18 to 20 percent more power. This means that all power of the engines goes to the main rotors. But who did invent this special rotor system? It started already in 1902 in Colmar in Alsace. Max Burkhard had an idea for an aircraft with intermeshing rotors and he received a patent by the German Empire. Don't the wings look like those of Otto Lilienthal's hang glider? And now to Anton Flettner. This film recordings from November 12, 1942 show the complex control movements of the swash plates on the Flettner helicopter FL282 Hummingbird very good to see is the common forward and backward movement of pitch control. The demonstration flights show pretty good the great flight stability, which is also demonstrated for a released joystick. Now we are flying into the year 2004 and landing at the airfield of the Flight Model Club Condor at Brückeborg. The model Flatner FL282 Hummingbird shows what is possible. The model designer Dieter Störig is also the pilot. And how do the rotor designs of Max Burkhardt, Anton Flettner and the modern Karmann K-Max work? The rotors are turning in opposite directions. The left rotor rotates counterclockwise, the right one clockwise. Result is a balanced torque so that the fuselage of the helicopter does not rotate around the yaw axis. So there is no need for a tail rotor. The rotor blades don't touch each other because of the V-shaped arrangement of the rotor axis. Always one rotor blade rotates over the adjacent rotor head. This is a model of the gearbox. An electric motor with a pinion drives a larger gear with integrated freewheeling unit and the opposite direction of rotation of the rotors is carried out by the two bevel gears. For this purpose, the engine has been tilted into the inclined position of one rotor axis so that the teeth can bite properly. Inside the model it looks like this. Let's take a look at the purely mechanical mixer for the pitch control of the two flattener rotors. The frame of the aluminum mixer is gimbaled at the rear and is driven by four completely independent servos. Push rods connect the mixer to the swash plates and deliver the control commands to the rotors. 
The frame is tilted upward at its front end and both swash plates move upward. Now the angle of attack of all blades of both rotors is increased and an ascending force will be generated, the helicopter climbs. For this purpose the frame is tilted sideways and the two swash plates slide oppositely up and down due to the increased drag on one of the rotors, which previously balanced counter torque, is disturbed and the body rotates in the desired direction. The total lift of both rotors remains unaltered. Both swash plates are tilting back and forth together, since the two control levers are mounted on a common rocker. The helicopter flies backwards or forwards. Both swash plates are tilting simultaneously left or right because their control levers mounted within the frame are adjusted against each other. The helicopter rolls to the left or right. And so the ancient swash plates by Dieter Schlüter don't come to the fatal idea to twist around the rotor masts they are secured at the outer ball joints with long hinged guide rods. But now some flights. Because lack of the dangerous tail rotor, it's safe to load and unload under the tail boom. But the helicopter can do even more. The entire mechanics and electronics of the helicopter is experimentally combined in a driving unit as a compact mechanical block. Thus it can be quickly removed and inserted into another model by unscrewing four screws and by unplugging of one electrical connection. So this mechanical box now moves into the multi-purpose helicopter Flettner FL107 Panda. Here are two screws sufficient, which are located exactly at the center of gravity. Theoretically many more helicopters could be built, all of which could be equipped with the same drive unit. But this is a future field of experimentation. <laughs>